I don't think anybody, you know, everybody knows Michelle, but we'll still hear what she yes. has to say about herself. <laughs> So we are recording the session on the CELA by literacy on world language testing. And again, I'm Donna Lansbury. We just heard from Vince and now Michelle, you, are you able to, we've had a, it's a little glitchy. Can you hear us, Michelle? Looks like she's not even on. Okay, Michelle, we'll come back to Michelle in a few minutes. Um, we're gonna start with the world language website. Oh, let me give you the link there. And I'm going to put that in the chat. Whoops. I thought I hit copy. Instead, I've copied an entire letter of reference for one of my student teachers and stuck it in there. I don't think you'll need that. Let me try that again. <laughs> so let's just do it this way. There we go. So that'll link you to this page. So we are the Washington Association for Language Teaching and Vince, Michelle and I are the testing team. And what we do is provide support for the state of Washington, but also throughout the region. And actually Michelle has worked with many states giving support to getting language start, started. So just a quick look, kind of walk you through a little bit just the home and um, I just, so I'm gonna talk about home and about, and I want you to be thinking about what questions you specifically have about language testing. And so um, if you'll go ahead and start putting them in the chat and I'm just gonna give you a real quick little overview here and then we'll look at your questions. And then Vince gonna, is gonna talk about how do you get started? What if your district doesn't have it yet? or your school, what if it's not set up yet? How do you get started? And then we'll go into how to order the test and the seal of literacy and all that and all the history behind it, which Michelle is our expert on all of that. And so she'll go into that, but feel free to start writing your questions in the chat. And then, um, and then we'll, after I go through, just after I go through the home and about before we get on the, before we get started on getting started, We'll take a look at those and see if we can focus in exactly on your questions. So um, we are a part of Waffled. If you go to the waffled.net, our state association, um, there is a link under advocacy to the testing or this is the straight website. We partner now um, as of the last year or two with the University of Washington through their um, language center they host our website. And so we're able to coordinate with them and with OSPI, which is our office, our state um, education office, and to provide this service so that students can get high school credit for their heritage languages by taking a various tests. And it's recognized up to, if they have at least two credits, that meets the requirements for at least Washington State Public Universities. And if they have three credits, that meets the requirement for the UW um, exit slip. So we also, Michelle will go into this a little bit more. We are really pleased to announce that we used to do custom testing. When I say we, I mainly mean Michelle, but <laughs> do custom testing for all the less commonly taught languages. But now that is all being handled through OSPI, our state organization. And so, this gives you a little bit of an overview of just what, who we are and where we are. And then just again, a little bit about us. We are part of Waffled and that um, if you wanna know more about our state association, you can visit us there. And then this is how we used to do the testing, but now we go through OSPI. So let me take a look. Um, questions, before I turn it over to Vince and you can open your mic even. And um, do you have specific questions that you would like to make sure we address as we go through this, um, specific to your school, to your district, to your state, on how to do competency testing, how to get started, how to get test ordered, how to get administrators on board? Is there anything specific? And if you don't have a question right now, don't worry about it. 
If a question comes up while we're going through this, feel free to just jump in at any time and either put it in chat or open your mic. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Vince and he's gonna talk a little bit about how you get started. How do you start the program? Okay, so this came about, um, I'm going to say approximately, and Michelle can help me with this, uh, about 10 or 12 years ago, when um, it was recognized that we have a number of languages and that in the state of Washington, and that we can test people for the competency. I approached this from my uh, being a teacher of, you know, ELLs, because I recognized the importance of that. And one of the first things I needed to do and what you need to do is if you're going to get started is to make sure that your district does recognize that this is one of the things that you can do. Um, there, normally this should be in board policy already, but if not, then you might have to get your board to approve this, your school board, before you can actually start this process. Um, once you get this process, I mean, we have the site set up so that it's basically there and it also connects to uh, Michelle and Donna and to me so that we can, you know, advise you on that. Um, there are lots of different providers. So uh, Avant Assessment with their stamp series and their World Speak series of tests are very commonly used. Um, there is the Apple um, group of testing there and for the languages that are even a little bit more obscure than the ones that they offer. And they offer those two groups, um, particularly Avant, they offer 50 languages or so. But there are other like Alta that offers 150 languages. Prices vary, that's always the difference. And, and that's one of the things that you have to determine when you're setting this up is who's paying for the test. For example, in my district, as I set this up, um, specifically told that the district would not support paying for any tests because that would be a gift of public funds. So we have always had a way that we would get the students to pay. And then there were some people who offered scholarships for students who couldn't afford um, the, the test fees. Um, ended up with, particularly in my district, after getting this started um, in my area, in the Spokane area, Spokane School District itself is large enough that they have their own testing several times a year, but they are a closed system. You must be a student in the Spokane School District in order to take advantage of their testing. In my area, I was the only one giving testing for a while, so I was inviting students from other school districts, mm -hmm. letting counselors know so that they could send students. Um, the whole idea being that many of the students who are taking these tests aren't always wanting to know what their proficiency is. Um, they want to know if they can get credits to help them graduate. And of course, as an ELL teacher, that's kind of what my goal was as well. I've got you know, Vietnamese students, let's give them a test in Vietnamese and get them those credits that are going to help them meet the requirements for graduation. So um, it depends on if your district has a school that has already been doing this, if you have multiple high schools and you're suddenly saying, hey, I would like to start this myself, then it's already set up in your policy. If you are the first one, you might have to approach the district administration and say, how do I get this started? And you're gonna fall into the same kind of ideas. I'm like, who's paying for it? How is it going to work, et cetera. I relied on the kindness of my world language teaching department as my proctors um, for many years. Um, and I was actually giving them, you know, Starbucks cards for, you know, staying after school and helping me for a couple hours, that kind of thing. There's those nuances. The technicalities, you know, we've overcome all of those. I like to say this site here would help you get started and get set up. Um, we're resources. I'm in the Spokane area. Donna's on normally on the um, west side. Michelle's everywhere and always easily accessible. Um, so if you have specific questions, like I say, we're here to help you. Um, it has become much easier to get some of those extremely less commonly taught languages um, to be tested. And that includes what we would consider to be Native American languages, so that we can get those students who speak, you know, a language 
indigenous to the you know continental United States or Alaska to um, actually get the credit for their languages as well. Thank you, Vince. Um, just as if you can give me a thumbs up, just hit the little thumbs up button or hold up your thumb. Does your school district <laughs> have um, a comp the World Language Competency Based Credits Program in action? Are they doing it yet in your district? Okay, Emma, good. Kristen, maybe. Uh, Joyce, not yet. And I know Vince what? did. Do we know what districts you're from? Yeah, Joyce, can you tell us again what district? Yeah, I'm in uh, West Ada School District in Idaho. Oh, in Idaho, yeah. You yeah. probably don't have this system set up in Idaho, but. We just got the seal approved last year and I've been working with the state to figure out different ways to make it accessible to the districts. But now our district mm -hmm. has to go through that whole, you know, red tape of approval. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of how to help students in the meantime. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, great. through this, they have to get it approved at the school board, don't they, Michelle? Well, you see, there's two different things, really. Uh, in Washington, we started with the competency based credits. So students could earn one to four competency based credits based on taking approved assessments. And that's where Donna talked about the custom tests for the languages like Karin and Chukis and, and uh, the number of languages, Tongan, that are. Uh, not available through nationally available assessment companies like Actful, uh, Language Testing International, or Alta, or Avant. And so uh, that was that, that way we could say that we would basically serve all languages one way or the other. Sometimes it took us a little while, but we were able to do that. That had been going on for a number of years before Washington passed the state seal of biliteracy law in 2014. A lot of other states, all the other states pretty much, I mean, there's a few maybe that had previously had competency-based credits before they got the state seal. But I think a lot of states are finding that the thing they're aiming for directly is the state seal, which of yes. course is at a higher level of proficiency than uh, say one credit or two credit. And so we found it good to set up the testing system so that we could early on recognize students even when they didn't have very strong language skills, they could still earn a credit or two, which could be a huge help to, especially to some of the, the refugee students or, or uh, students that have come late to, to, to be in our schools. So um, in any case, the way it was set up in our state to do the competency-based credit testing, this, the district had to have a policy that allowed for it. However, there was a model for that policy and procedure that came from the, the state level, from the school directors association. And so we had lots of examples of how to do it. it. That needed to be approved by the school board. Now the state seal is in law. It was passed by the legislature. So really a school board shouldn't need to do anything special to authorize the state seal. However, in order to give equitable access for students to earn the credits, they would have to have the competency-based credit testing. Otherwise, they would be probably limited to offering credits through AP and IB testing. And probably mm. some districts have done that, which would be very unfortunate because you, you'd be excluding a lot of other languages. Yeah. I don't know if that helps answer that question. But yeah. so we have, so jo Joyce is from Idaho, right? And then Kristen, you're, aren't you a student with Bridget? I am. Um, mm -hmm. I am currently student teaching on Clover Park which is southwest of Tacoma. Based credit um, tests. I've done them before. They recently received a grant and they're using part of that grant money to get testing started. And Wonderful. they've already found the, the testing company they wanna go through and how to implement it. The problem that they are looking at right now is how to best communicate with parents, um, students, and just the community in general on the value of this test and stuff like that. So if there's any insight and the time we have here today, you have for the district and how oh, kind yeah, of to yeah. frame oh, that yeah. to make it seem yeah, like a really good investment of this money we're getting. Um, yeah, I would definitely. Any Do you know if the money's coming through the Heritage Language Grant? Because that's how uh, Emma was able to test in Mount Vernon through the Heritage Language oh. Grant. Is it that one? Um, this money is coming from the DOD directly because we serve oh, a third oh, of our students are JBLM affiliated students. Wonderful. 
That's great. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you go back to the homepage on Waffle yes. Language Testing, our UW site, down, if you scroll down a little bit, this is a fabulous video. It was made in 2014 at the uh, kind of the closing of a grant that our state had from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that talks about the benefits of doing this competency-based credit testing. And so for sure, something like that. At that time, we had brochures in a number of languages that also explained it very easily. And I think if you work directly with Veronica Trapani, she can also help you with that. But we're also very happy from Waffle to be involved in planning a parent meeting or coming and talking to them just so they can see examples. We've got lots of reports and uh, comments from students about the benefits and all of those. Usually the kinds of questions that come up are, you know, like, well, what's in it? Well, who recognizes it? Well, why would my student want to do this or whatever? Or, you know, you don't recognize my language. Well, yeah, we do. We're going to do as many languages as we can. But yes, yeah. a lot of those materials were created in that time period, 2012, 2014, 2016. But then it sort of became more commonplace. And now people have sort of forgotten that we did know how to do outreach to parents about these things. But we need to do more and we'll do more. I was, I'm and, glad you brought up about the video because I was. I meant to mention that, that I'm not going to take the time to show it right now because I want to be able to let you guys answer any questions or talk about what you need, but please watch it later. So do you want to go on to ordering tests now? Well, and, I would like to just yeah, say one thing, and, and that is, is I want to throw Emma into the mix here because I just watched part of her presentation in the previous hour where they've done, because of the grants that they have, done extensive testing of um, their students in the Mount Vernon School District. And I think mm -hmm. that she would be a good resource as well. So there you go, Emma, giving you a shout out there. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. Yes, I, we were very impressed with what you were doing in Mount Vernon. Um, I'll just mention real quickly what we did in Everett School District. So I piloted, the program in the Everett School District. And it started with just my heritage Spanish class. And, um, and I got a grant from Waffelt for $750 to pay. And I used that to pay for all their tests. And, but it was just Spanish. So there was about 20 bucks a test. And um, when the results came in and they saw that, oh, this actually does go on their transcripts and all these students Many of them were new immigrants from Spanish speaking countries that it boosted them towards their graduation. And many of them went on to this AP Spanish or another language when they saw that and that we had a 20% jump in um, the, the academic levels of our Latino students in the school district. They're like, oh, wait, they actually made it part of our school district assessments under the, it came under that category. So it was no longer like a little project and it was a district-wide thing. Assessments handled it and the state covers all funding for it. Well, for, at first they used to charge $10 per student, no matter what the language, whether it was a $20 test or 220. And then they just went to make it equitable, the same for everybody and now they cover it all. So it, as they see the results and you, you know, grants are a great way to get started and you build that up. And the parents, when they see that and they see, they give them a certificate or the gold medallion to wear to graduation, they're so proud. It's just a wonderful experience for them. All right, all yours now, Michelle, she's gonna talk about ordering tests. So give a little background and the seal of biliteracy and the global seal of biliteracy. Okay, do you wanna go back to the order of tests page? So oh, yes. you, this is where we used to have a lot of detailed instructions for districts that needed to order tests for languages that didn't have a national testing company behind them. Now that process, as she mentioned, oh, is handled through sorry. Veronica. I'm so, sorry about um, that, you guys. <laughs> what happened? Oh, we lost. Oh, that's interesting. Anyway, uh, I thought it was, now sorry. Veronica is coordinating all of that through the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction. So if they have a long list of languages and testing options, yeah. some of them have multiple testing options. And uh, do you want to just un unshare and then go figure it out? <laughs> are yeah. you still on? Yeah, go ahead and talk for a minute. Yes, okay. we are. Yeah. Let me figure out um, what's going on. But if you have a language that you don't find that Language Testing International or Avant or Alta offers, then you would go to Veronica and she would help work with you to see if we can get it assessed. 
Uh, just let me just be... say real quick, if for some reason we all get kicked off, just come right back in. I'll restart it. Okay. Thank Sorry. You, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think I think this Zoom is really tired of PNC Apollo. It's been a very intense day, I think. <laughs> I know. Uh, so um, I think the key message here, and that's where when Kristen, when you said they're deciding on the testing company, I said, uh, no, you cannot decide on a testing company because you cannot offer equitable access for all languages if you try to pick one company because some languages are only offered through one company or another. And we can certainly help you. And so there's that Michelle. You can so I, serve I, all the languages. Oh, and she. perhaps it is the case that you just have a few languages that you're testing. But I have heard stories of districts that have decided we're only offering. Oh, I think I. Okay, I just see I'm unstable again. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. Yeah. But it looks like she's gotten knocked off if I look at who's, who's uh, participating. Are you? We, oh. While we're waiting for her to reconnect, you guys want to see what assessment options there are. Um, now, OSPI actually, let me just mention, because I forgot you have to download this to open it, but um, they are redoing this part of the website so that you don't have to download it to open it, and it'll be a more comprehensive. It should be going uh, live in the next week or two. But when you look at this, you'll be able to see, okay, what language? I'm usually on my big screen at home. Again, I'm on my little laptop here in London, so I'm not as coordinated. And, and while she's opening that up, I do want to say that in the state of Washington, there used to be a requirement that the students pass a state standardized ELA test, such as mm -hmm. the WASL or the SBAC or whatever was replacing it. Um, now they've basically gone to the idea that, well, in order to graduate from high school, you have to meet certain ELA requirements anyway. So if you're meeting those requirements for graduation, there is no specific test that is available. So mm -hmm. Joyce, if you're in Idaho, I don't know what Idaho's ideas on that are going to be, whether they're going to have to pass some kind of standardized test or whether they just say, oh, the English portion of it is taken care of by your ELA graduation requirements. Yeah, a lot of states are just going to that, because, which makes sense. If you've passed your English, senior English, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so here's a lot of the different tests. So when you look at it, you can look up if a student says, well, what language? Our, our motto is kind of no language left behind. And we, sometimes it takes months to find an evaluator. But um, we are working with Avant on all those unique Lictols, less commonly taught languages, to find and be able to provide testing for any language. And often they can find it through going through the parent and their community and training them. But Alta is a real common one. Um, Avant is uh, their, both their stamp tests and their world speak. There's, I think it's up to between all of them, like, oh, I forget, like 50 languages now. I want to so say many, about 50, yeah. It's yeah, so the majority cool. of, oh, Michelle, are you back? back yeah. I just want to say, note that World Speak is now actually branded as STAMP. Everything, all the assessments are yeah. STAMP. Some are two skill, some are four skill. All and same company. WS, yeah. All right, I'm going to go back to the page and go ahead. All yours, Michelle. <laughs> okay, I think what I was trying to say before, I was so rudely interrupted by Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> was that uh, that uh, Kristen was had to do with trying to choose a testing company. I think you have to look at what are the languages you've got and then you make the matches. Sometimes you'll have multiple choices of, of companies options. Like for example, a lot of the tests that are available through Apple are also available through Stamp or vice versa. So if you've had a reason to choose one over the other, you know they're, they're, they're quite similar in a lot of respects. They, they each has their strengths. Um, the other thing is that even though I think the way the model procedure was written was to start with the most comprehensive and the least expensive tests. So like this test available through Avant assessment, then perhaps uh, Alta we didn't even have at the time that we drew the, did this model uh, procedure, but Alta test. So those are the things that you would have in your district procedure. Probably it would just be handled by whatever department is, is coordinating tests which might be world languages, it might be bilingual or multilingual education, depending on how the district is set up. 
in Seattle when I worked there, and I, and I actually coordinated their testing from the beginning in 2010, before I worked there even, but uh, and part of the reason I did is that they did open up their testing days to other um, to students from other districts. And so I felt it was appropriate for me as a state person to support that effort. But in any case, we worked cooperatively. So my partner was a, an ELL coach for middle school, and she would make the on-site arrangements at our Seattle World School, which was a bilingual orientation center where a lot of our students started in the district. And then they went off to other high schools generally, but then they, they felt comfortable coming back. So we had a great guy, Mr. TV, he had a very long Thai name, who was the tech person. And it was always a good experience, a testing experience, because it was a familiar place. We would always uh, do both on, uh, the online testing, like STAMP, for example, or in WorldSpeak, and also our custom tests. The same day as we did handwritten tests or ones that had uh, telephone interviews like Alta tests or sometimes actual tests, but it depends on how much support you have in terms of uh, proctors and, and so on. Uh, we can definitely walk you through all those things. The first thing that's most important is just to know what are all the possible languages that you might want to test in your district. Usually, uh, people are testing in the high school years because this is about high school credit. But it's also very valuable to test at the end of eighth grade if that's uh, if you've got the right mix of people. For example, in our dual language immersion programs, we always tested at the end of eighth grade, and those students earned competency-based credits for world languages based on the proficiency results of that. Many of them did qualify for the state seal even by end of eighth grade. We also had schools that started testing a lot of their ELL qualified students, in part because uh, they were still pretty strong in their literacy at that point in their home language. And we can see by the students that we test at, at the University of Washington now sometimes that they may maintain their oral language, but they kind of forget how to write their language if they go years and years without doing it. And so there are several big benefits to testing at the end of eighth grade. One is that if students can arrive in high school with some credits already, even if it's just one or two, maybe they don't get to the highest level at that younger age, especially on some of the assessments, which are really adult assessments and pretty challenging, they still are going to have an advantage to get through high school and graduate and know that they're starting a little bit ahead. Uh, and the other thing is that it's just that prestige thing of knowing that my language was recognized. To walk into high school already confident about that, that's a huge factor as well. So we always encourage them to consider whether it was a good match. And we had some wonderful uh, ELL uh, coordinators at schools that really knew their students. For some, it wasn't a good match. Or sometimes you had students who were very recently arrived and their English skills were not high enough to get a very high score, say, on stamp, on reading and listening, because the questions are in English that they respond to. But if we saw a very high score in writing and speaking and it was low in, in reading and writing, we just said, no problem. You're just going to retest in a year when you, where your English is a little stronger and you'll be good to go. Uh, it's all also feasible for them to take an alternative assessment like ALTA, which is uh, just writing and just speaking, an oral interview by phone. And the writing test actually has the prompts in the language. And so they don't even have to really know English other than just general instructions. So anytime that a student does not do as well as we think that they could do, then let's look at alternatives and backups. And we've certainly had students that for whatever reason, they didn't feel very comfortable recording themselves, like if with Stamp, for example, Apple does the same, but maybe they want to pay for getting an OPI oral interview because they feel more confident speaking the language. So I know of uh, at least one student that 